All right, kids, you can make your way back. Your teacher's in the back of the auditorium uh, for Kids Zone and Todd House. Uh, this morning, I just want to share uh, my prayer for you uh, as, a, as a person and for our church, uh, for our church is. Um, this is a prayer that uh, is in scripture. It's a prayer that I've prayed many, many times um, for Meeting House Church. I've prayed it for myself, for my family. I've prayed it for individual people at Meeting House Church. And, and uh, it's a prayer that Paul, the Apostle Paul, first uh, prayed for the church in Ephesus. Christians in the city of Ephesus and uh, about 57 AD. So it's a very old prayer that's been prayed many, many times. Um, and, and so we're in Ephesians chapter 3 and Ephesians chapter 1 today. And we're going to start off in Ephesians chapter 3 with, with uh, my prayer for, for you, for us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14. Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father. From whom his whole family in heaven on earth derives its name. That's us. We are, we are God's family. Okay? Uh, so this prayer is for us. For God's people. I pray that you. So here's Paul's going to give us the reason why he's praying. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power. Together with all the saints to grasp, to understand, to comprehend, okay, uh, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know his love, this love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's, that's an incredibly powerful prayer, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I pray. This is my prayer for you as, as, as a person, for your family, uh, for, for this church, for our church, um, that we would grasp, okay, know, comprehend, be able to wrap our brains around uh, God's incomprehensible love for us, his people, his church. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus. This is a prayer that I've prayed many, many times for Meeting House Church. God loves us so much, folks, that we can't in our natural abilities understand it all. You see, that's what he's praying. He's saying, look, guys, you got to understand God loves you more than your intellect can comprehend. It, you get it, you can get it to a point, but it's, it, it, you, you can understand it to the limits of your intellect, but then it keeps going far beyond that. I pray that. Moms, dads, let me ask you a question. It's a no-brainer. Do you love your kids? Of course you do, right? Have you ever gone overboard protecting your kids? You ever done that? Uh, a few years ago, many years ago now, getting close to it anyways, when our kids were all small, um, uh, we, we took a Sunday drive out to the Cape, you know, down Route uh, 6A, you know, antiquing, just seeing the sights, and the, the kids were all car seat age and everything, and, and as happens a lot of times when they're that age, you got to stop for a bathroom break, right? And so, so we find this little gas station, and, and we pull off, and, and Christy takes the crew in, you know, into the bathroom, and, and she comes comes out, you know, three, four minutes later, and she is just fuming. I mean, angry. Believe it or not, she's, she can get angry. If you, know, if you know Christy, it might be hard to believe, but she was, and she put, get in the car, kids. And she said, James, wait a minute, I got to go back in that store. And she went back in the store, and she just gave that store manager what for. Because, because when you walked in the store, the cash register was right here, 
And, and there was just all kinds of filthy magazines at, at kid eye level, you know? And she, she, says, she says, I can't believe they got that. My kids, that's right at there. You know, this, she's talking, and she's never met this person before. What are you thinking? My, you're putting that garbage into my little kids' minds. How could you do that, you know? And so she comes out, you know, and, and, and she's vented, and she's just protected, gone overboard, you know? Uh, one of our kids was, was trying out for a basketball team, and, and uh, tryouts were finished, and I watched the tryouts. I played basketball, and, and, and you know, I could see the, the kids should have made it, you know, should, should have made the team. This kid's good. And, uh, and, and so the coach comes up to me afterwards and says, hey, James, uh, if, if, if your kid makes the team, um, are they going to miss, you know, I know you're a pastor, are they going to miss any games on Sundays? I said, well, yeah, they'll, if, if the game time conflicts with church, you know, they'll, they'll miss the game, but if it's before, we'll get there. If it's after, we'll get there, you know. And, uh, and so the next day, you know, the roster comes out, and my kid didn't make the team. And I was, it was my turn to get furious. And, and I, so I'm, I did something that I don't recommend. <laughs> okay, I don't recommend this. But I, you know, I, I called the, the commissioner of the league. I said, what in the world is going on here? I think I'm in and out here. I said, what in the world is going on here? You know, I actually came up to me and asked me this question and then and I gave him the answer you know so I not really making a whole lot of friends that way right <laughs> like aren't you a pastor you're supposed to behave better than this you know but we go overboard protecting our kids right is there anything mom dad that you would not do short of sin to provide for your kids there's not is there we, we, they've got it all. When, I can remember when, when, our, when each one of our kids were born, started with, with Ethan and, and went through the rest of them. Each time when I, when I first held them, right, you know, just when they're tiny, right, right there in the hospital, right out of the, right out of the chute. Uh, and, uh, and, and I was overcome with, 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 with two things each time. Number one, man, I love this kid. You know, it was not a choice. I, I didn't have to make a decision. You know, your heart just goes out, right, immediately. And it, it never comes back, does it? It never does. You know, and the second thing, what I realized each time, and remembered, I thought, my goodness, if, if I can love my kids like this, and I'm a frail, you know, fractured, sinful person, how much more must God love me and his children? Not because I'm anything special, but because he is something special, right? If we can love our kids that passionately, how much more does God love his? Church, listen, you are family. And God loves his family passionately. Passionately. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 5 with me. You got to get this because God loves his church so much. He loves you so much. He loves us so much that Jesus gave up his life to create us. Okay? That he gave up his life to create us. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5. This is a verse, a couple of verses we normally use to talk about husbands and wives, right? And families. But that's not what it's really about. It's really not about the love a husband is supposed to have for his wife or a wife is supposed to have for her husband. It's about God's love for the church. Let's look at that. Ephesians 5. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, how? Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. God takes the most 
the, you know, the, the, the relationship that we, that we associate with the, with the most intense and loyal love, the, the deepest love that we know as humans. And he says, folks, you got to get this. This is a picture, a, a small picture. doesn't quite get it, but, but this is how I love you. And just so we don't miss it, he says in verse 32, this is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. God loves his church passionately. You don't, you don't go overboard. You don't give your life for anyone except for those you love passionately, do you? What if, what if we trust that God loves us? What if you trust that God loves you as much as you love your kids? as much as you love your family. Even more. What if you trusted God's love to that extent? How would that change the way that you think God feels about you? What would that do to your perspective how would that change if we as a church believed, trusted that God loved us as much as we love our kids? How would that change the way you feel about our church? How would that change the way you think God feels about your church? It would revolutionize it, wouldn't it? It would, it, would, it would completely alter your thoughts about yourself and your family and your church. That we would trust. My prayer is that we would trust God's love for us. I'm not finished praying. I got some more to go, okay? Next request, Ephesians chapter, chapter 1, verse 18. I pray also the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you. Folks, God loves you so much. He has a hope that, that is so amazing planned for you that, that you can't get it. You need, we need the eyes of our understanding opened so that we can comprehend it, so that we can know this, this thing, this hope that God has for us. Because God loves you, okay, because God loves his church, he has a favorable future planned for you. That's what hope means. Hope means confidence of a faithful future. God loves you. He has a good, a favorable future planned for you. He has a good, favorable future planned for this church. Isn't that what every mom and dad wants for their kids? A favorable future? Isn't it? I mean, that's what we want. That's what we, everything we do is about, is about their future. Man, I want you to grow up to be better and do better than I, than I am and that I did, right? Every, every yes, every answer, every question they ask us, every yes we give, every no, you know, every, uh, every guideline, every family rule, for our kids comes out of our, the love that we have for our kids, right? And nowhere else. That's where it comes. And it's all so that they will have a favorable future. 
Everything. Kids, you know, I know it's hard, right? Guys, you guys remember, mom and dad, when you get that, that two-letter answer that you just hate, no. It, boy, it's hard to believe that comes from love sometimes, right? But everything we do, kids, you got to know this. You, you'll learn it when you, if, when you have kids, but you got to know that everything that comes out of your mom and dad's my, mouths, every guideline is, is, comes from their heart of love for you. We want them to succeed. You know, Ethan, uh, my, my oldest son, is, is, he's bigger, you know, taller, not, not stronger yet than, than, than me. You know? But I don't feel competitive about that. You know, I'm glad that he's bigger and stronger. You know? Nathaniel's in eighth grade and he's already as big as I am. Uh, they still can't take me in a wrestling match, okay? I've let you know that. Uh, Two on one, they still can't do it. They think they can, but they can't. Uh, Maggie, my daughter, you know, she's, she's a better person. You're, you, you want the same. You know, I'm, 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 I hope you see, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, this is not about me. It's about, it's about uh, your love for your kids and, and God's love for us, you know. Maggie and, and all the boys, they're better people than I was at their age. And that's what we want, right? That's what we want. We want nothing but a favorable future for our kids. What if you trust God? You trust that, that just like you, everything you do in relationship for, with your kids is so that they will have a favorable future. So they'll succeed. What if you trusted that God loved you in that same way. That everything that comes out of his heart, everything that you find in his word, is, is about his love for you. How would that change your outlook on yourself and your family over the next two, three months, years? How would it change the way you look at your life when you look down the road? What if you trusted, what if we as a church trusted God? Trusted that He has a favorable future planned for us just like we have for our kids. How would that change your outlook on the future of, of, of this church? How would it change the what you think God has in store for this church? God has great things planned for you and for his people and for his church. Trust him. Trust him. I'm not finished yet. I've got one more request. I'm going to keep praying if you don't mind. As a husband and a parent, you know, I, I want to give everything I've got, you know, to my wife and kids. Right? Don't you? Mom's dad. Don't you want to? You don't hold back, do you? We're, we're not perfect, so sometimes we don't we actually give it all and, and we make mistakes, but man, we want to give it all. We, we want them to know we are 100% behind them. I want my wife, Christy, to know that I love her, that she's the one for me. You know? I want her to know that I'm 100% behind her. I want her to succeed and that I will always do whatever I have in my power to provide for her. I think we just died. Now we're getting there. Uh, you know, my kids, I, I want them to know dad is 100% behind them. I want them to know that that every, you right, don't you? Every wisdom, every, every bit of life lesson, every, every resource you have, you're, they're, they're backed up, man, by the, by the full faith and strength of, of, of mom and dad. 
Folks, God gives us, his church, everything he has to give. God does not hold back from his people. He does not hold back from his church. Ephesians chapter 1, we'll start in verse 18 again and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump to 19. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know, first we said, the hope to which you have been called, that favorable future that God has planned for you, but now that you may know the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power. Help me with those next four words. For us who believe. Folks, God does not hold back from his people. His incomparably great power for us who believe. Verse 22, God placed all things under Christ's feet and appointed him to be head over everything. Next three words, help me. For the church. He placed Christ as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who God doesn't hold back. Not the halfness. God, not the quarter cup, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Folks, God owns it all. It all belongs to him. He has put his, his, his wealth, his riches are without limit. His power is unimaginable. No one or no thing can stop God from accomplishing His purposes in His people and in His church. And God holds none of it back from His people. He has pledged all of His resources. He has said, all of my power is for the church. And I've placed Jesus Christ over everything. Everything. So that he can wield my incomprehensible power. So that he can dispense my unimaginable riches for the benefit of the church. Of his people. God holds nothing back. From his people. His power is for us. He rules for our benefit. We are heirs of the God who owns everything. Oh, that our faith would rise. To the level of our inheritance as God's children. To the level of God's power on our behalf. That we would accept them. That we would believe them. That we would trust. That we would live, act, and think like this is our reality. Because it is. How would that change the way you look at your circumstances? The things that you want to change, that you've tried to change, but haven't been able to change, how would it change your perspective if you trusted that God never holds back from you? That everything He has is behind you.
as you follow him. His, 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 in, his, his riches, his incomprehensible power. What would you be able, be willing to try that until today you were afraid to try? If you actually trusted that you are an heir of God's incomprehensible riches and that you are backed by his unimaginable power. How would that change your perspective on your life, on your family, on yourself? How would that change what you think is possible for the church, for this church? How would it change what, what we would be willing to try to attempt as God's family? Knowing that he's, we're backed 100% by God. How would it change the expectations that you have about what can happen with God's church? Boy, mediocrity wouldn't even be a thought, would it? Failure, same old, same old, not even a consideration. that our faith would rise to the level of God's passionate love for us. That it, would, that it would rise to the confidence of the favorable future that God has planned for us as individuals, as his families, and as a church. That our faith would rise to the level of our inheritance and God's power to get us there. I pray that our eyes would be open because God responds to faith. God responds to trust. It's the key that unlocks all of it for us. Let God open your eyes today. Allow yourself to trust. Things will change. Life will be different. Church will be different. Let's pray. Father God, we're just uh, overcome by your unimaginable love. God, because we know we're, we're in and of ourselves, we're not deserving. We know that. God, but you love us anyway. God, that we would just trust, if we could just trust that, that you love us as much as we love our family, as much as we love our, our, our kids, our moms and dads. What a, what a great difference it would make. But God, you love us even more. God, open our eyes to your love, to the future that you have planned for us, to the inheritance that we have in your power for us. In Jesus' name, amen.